the jazz singer was the first sound film to be released in the US, in fact, worldwide. And at that time, most screens were pretty small, so the image that you saw was a long way away and pretty minute. As a result, the sound was in mono, single loudspeaker behind the screen. When we got to the early 50s, the first sign of competition from television occurred. People started having black and white TVs in their living rooms. And the result was that the film industry felt that in some way they had to compete, compete in terms of the quality of the presentation. In fact, the most landmark issue that resulted from it was the issue of The Robe in 1953, which was 20th Century Fox's first cinemascope picture, which was twice as wide as anything anybody had seen in the cinema before. And they felt that you couldn't have a picture that wide without sound to match it. As a result, they developed what was called a four-track magnetic process. Left, center, right, across the screen, and a surround channel, a single surround channel behind you. By 1970, uh, these big picture formats were dying out. You might perhaps catch a 70mm release in a big city or what was called a roadshow release, but that was very rare. But there's competition again coming from the home. Color TV is the norm, um, and people are, are getting more sophisticated staying at home. So the film industry had to fight back in some measure. And that was one of the things that led to, in the mid-70s, to the release of Dolby Stereo. This meant we had four-channel sound in the theaters, left, center, right, and surround, all off the conventional photographic optical process. But the print was compatible for playback in a mono theater. And indeed, the print cost was no higher than that of a conventional mono-optical soundtrack. There were still occasional 70mm releases, but the way that was done was for five channels behind the screen, there was, let us say, one solo voice. So what would happen was that single voice would get spread on all five channels, and the result was a big foggy mess. You wouldn't know where the sound was kind of come from. And I really wanted to do something better for 70mm. And the next step in that history came in 1977 with the release of a little film called Star Wars. So my thinking was that using two tracks instead of half left and half right for the five channels behind the screen, we'd take the 7 mil print and just use left, center, and right and take those two intermediate tracks and just use them to augment the bass response. And that came to be known as Baby Boom. That's why Star Wars is pretty clear behind the screen. Good stereo definition in the original 1977 release, but also had much better bass response than the cinema than, than was common at the time. So it was apparent that the next logical step would be to try and find a process that would enable you to have stereo surround tracks, both left and right. But it's significant that Apocalypse Now was one of the very first, in fact, the first announced film to have a stereo surround format which uh, we tentatively call split surround or stereo surrounds, it really is the great grandfather or the grandfather of what today is on almost every film release and every DVD release, which is known as 5.1 sound, which 5.1 channels are three channels behind the screen, left surround, right surround, and a subwoofer channel, which is the point one. Here we have six magnetic stripes on the film. It looks like three, but there's two tracks here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And those tracks on a conventional 70 mil would be left, center, right, and a mono surround track. Sometimes the two extra half channels of half left and half right. So on Apocalypse, what we have was left, then a track that has the low frequency information and also the high frequency information for left rear. And then center, half right is the same boom and surround combination and then a mono surround track for theatres that are not equipped for this new stereo surround format. What I'd say is the average person in the home today has got his surrounds turned up far too high and his subwoofers turned up far too high because he wants to show off to his neighbour that he's got a home theatre. And in actual fact, it, it's not replicating the intent of the movie maker the way that the average film is played back at home.